Um, this morning, I want to talk from the thought um, growing through 2020. Growing through 2020. And I want to read this scripture. It's a very short uh, passage, but it's a powerful one. And it's actually in Luke 2. And so Jesus is getting dedicated at the temple. We just lived it. We just did it. Um, he was being blessed. He was being prayed over. Uh, he was, he was uh, the promised child from an angel born of a virgin Mary. We, if you know the Christmas story, you know. But this was a supernatural uh, child. And, and even, even Jesus was dedicated to the Lord. And so he gets prayed over. And um, they, they're, they're returning back home from their child dedication. And as they're returning, they can't find Jesus um, because they stopped at Chili's for lunch. And they thought mom thought dad got them. Dad thought mom got them. And they start traveling home from Chili's. And then they're like, well, maybe, maybe the aunt grabbed them. And so they're about a day off. And they're looking at their caravan of people because how many people know child dedication is a party? And... Uh, they're like, he's not here. That's a problem. I know that's never happened to any of you. And so um, they drive back uh, on their camel and, and, and go get baby Jesus in the temple. And he, he looks at them and says, don't you know I'd be about my father's business? And they're like, son, I am your mama. And it says he submitted himself to her for the rest of his life. That's a good mama, y'all. You know that there were consequences for staying in the temple. And so... Um, but in Luke 2.52, it, it's a key verse because this is the moment, like, this is the moment that Luke is recording Jesus' childhood and bridging it to his adulthood. It's just this one verse, and then all of a sudden, Jesus is 30 years old. He's a boy in the temple. This one verse happens, and he's 30 years old. Like, that's quite a jump and it says this it says Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and what man he grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man and so we're going to just kind of lean in today of what it look may look like to be growing through 2020 can we pray Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, for what you're speaking, for what you're saying to our church. Thank you for the opportunity to pray and, 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 and to have friends like family, community that's going to surround you, that's going to help you lead your family and parent kids. And God, we're grateful for that today. We're grateful to be a part of your family. Your word says we're adopted in as sons and daughters, and we're grateful today. And God, I pray that you would speak through your word this morning. God, that you would speak not only to me, but through me. And God, we would lean in, that it would transform our life, that when we walk out of here today, that we would have something that would change our mind, that would change our spirit, that would change our circumstance, because your word is transformative. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, before I share a quick story, the Tampa Bay Rays, y'all, are headed to the World Series. We already have Lord Stanley. Come on, somebody. And now we have a shot, an opportunity to really make a difference with the World Series and bring it home to Tampa Bay. We are all praying for the Bucks and Tom Brady. I would love a three-peat. I'm already prophesying the Rays win. We're already believing with faith in our hearts that it is already done, right? Come on. And so, uh, man, that would just be incredible. So if you follow baseball, um, one, you follow it. 15 months out of the year because um, they have 180,000 games and uh, but if you follow baseball the Tampa Bay Rays are in the World Series um, and that has nothing to do with the message and so it's just exciting and uh, I used to I used to work at Moffitt Cancer Center uh, as a valet as a valet shout out to Moffitt Cancer Center valets and uh, yeah come on a bunch of us did and uh, that's m mostly how we got our Saturday night or our Saturday morning football, right? It was like we just recruited a bunch of Moffat valet people, and then we would go play football. Uh, but if, if you've never valeted before, it's probably one of the most glamorous jobs um, that you could do because it's 
there's constant spontaneity, there's constant change, you really never know what's going to happen. Um, no, it's the most mundane job you could ever do. You do the same thing over and over. You put a car up in the garage, you bring a car down from the garage, and you run all day for six-hour shifts um, unless you pick up a double. And so uh, it's, just, it's just not really the best uh, or, or, or most fun job for somebody that likes spontaneity and change and difference. And, and so I got rather bored often. And so we would figure out different ways to make valet fun. And um, I remember there, there were a few individuals when I would go to actually start my shift or start my job that day, I would say, hey, how's it going? And they're like, it's going. I'm like, cool. My favorite was another day in paradise. I was like, you got to get out more. Like, if this is paradise, like, you need to go on vacation. Like, we need to get you out of here. And it just, there was this, there was this temperament and this attitude and this spirit that we're just trying to go through our job day. We're just trying to go through the shift. We're just trying to make it out to the other side with a couple extra dollars in our pocket hopefully not yelling or getting into an argument with any of the customers, and then going home to another repetitious, mundane type of day. And, and I remember that was, that was the temperament. We're just, we're, we're, it's going. And I was praying over our church in this year, and I'm wondering how many of us are going through 2020 rather than growing through 2020. I wonder if, if the attitude and the temperament might be How's 2020? It's going. Another day in this pandemic paradise. It, it ain't fun, you know? Like, it hasn't, been a, it hasn't been a blast in quarantine for months at a time. It, it, some of you are home right now, and you're, you're struggling because you're just trying to go through 2020. But all throughout Scripture, I don't see God just going through it. He leads his people and they grow through it from glory to glory. Scripture says that they take them from glory to glory, from this place to that place, from one unveiling to the next unveiling, from I never saw it this way before and I can't believe I see it this way now and I'm ready for the next thing because I'm going to see something I didn't see before. It's about growing through 2020. And man, I got to tell you, there's some growing that can happen in this season. We're not just going through this year. We're not just trying to hopefully make it through Christmas and show up in 2021 like that's going to change everything. Jesus changes everything, not the calendar. And so I'm not just going through 2020. I want to grow. I want to grow. And one of the things that I realized in Jesus, Luke 2.52, is that from a small boy until he was about 30 years when he actually started his ministry, I believe he had this truth that resonated in his heart. My spirit, my responsibility. I heard this one time, I think I saw it on a graphic. Never heard the message, but man, it excited me just with the title. And I was like, I love that. My spirit, my responsibility. And when I say spirit, there's, there's some scriptures in the Old Testament that under the Hebrew way of thinking, you would know that when they talk about the heart or they talk about the soul or they talk about the spirit, what they're talking about is the inner man. It's, the, it's like what's happening inside of you rather than what's happening around you. And how many people know Satan will try to tempt you by the, by the people and the things and the circumstance around you, but when you say yes to Jesus, there's a guard that lives inside of you. And so there's this change that happens when we become followers and say yes to Jesus. And if you're right, taking notes, the first thought is just my spirit, my responsibility. If you haven't gotten the title yet, it's growing through 2020. And Proverbs actually gives us some wisdom. Proverbs 4, verse 23. It says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. What a powerful one-liner. I can just repeat this all day and walk away. You know, it's just, 
Can we get that in our soul today? Above all else. Like, this is the wisest man to have ever written, to ever existed, Scripture says. And his name is Solomon. And he's writing all of these, these little, he was Twitter before Twitter was Twitter. He's got these one-liners. You ever re read Proverbs and you're like, I don't know what's happening. It's just a bunch of random thoughts. Thank you. That's most of my notes. <laughs> like, that's, that's Solomon. He just had these, these quick little wisdom thoughts, and he threw them into this book. And, and, and in Proverbs 4, it says, you, you can actually leave that back up there. Above all else, above all else, guard your hearts for everything. Somebody say everything. Everything you do. Everything. Everything. Like, you chose that coffee Everything. The way you treat your kids, everything. The way you forgive people that have hurt you, everything. Everything. Above all else, guard your heart because in that place, what's happening in here, in your spirit, heart can be translated with spirit, by the way, they're interchangeable because it means your spirit, what's not the Holy Spirit, your spirit, what's happening on the inside. Everything you do flows from that place. That's why when Jesus comes in the Gospels, he says, I will put a wellspring of life in you. That's why, that's why the Holy Spirit doesn't come upon, but dwells within. Because it's from the inside place that everything else happens. It's from what's going on in here that's starting to lead the decisions we're making in 2020. It's, it's what's happening in here, and in here is why we are where we are sometimes in our circumstances and in our struggles. Like, there's, there's a belief system God wants to put inside of you, not just outside of you. Everything we do flows from it, and this is a mess. I, uh, Anybody else messy? Nobody wants to shout out. Okay. Um, anybody else really clean and organized? Those people love to shout. They're like, "Whoa, I'm clean and organized, right? Who's the messy clutter people? Nobody wants to shout that out. Okay, come on. Yeah, thank you. I uh, love it. Love it. I live most of my life with my wardrobe clean on my bed. It just was a pile of clothes everywhere. That's how I live most of my life. I'd push them over to the other side. Uh, that was my spouse for the longest time, and I would just sleep on one side of the bed, and then I would choose my clean clothes the other part of the uh, uh, times of my life, and then I'd go about my day, and, and it was great. But my, my room oftentimes would look a lot like this, just stuff everywhere. And, and for you clean, clean people, this is probably bothering you already, because you're like, why is this just thrown on the ground? At least fold it. And this, this would drive anybody kind of nuts. Any, anybody, anybody clean wire people? You know, I don't know if you, can they see this online? Can they see this online? Do I need to pick this up? Because it's really heavy. I would rather not. And um, it's just a rat's nest of wires. That's anybody's garage, right? And so um, it's just clutter. And, and, and I lived my life like this. And then I met my wife who didn't live like this. And it was the strangest thing to me to kind of understand and even grasp putting something back where you found it. I was like, what do you mean? I put stuff where I left it. <laughs> Not where I found it. And my pops, God bless him, tried so hard for so long. And I was like, wife, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to be able to help with this, you know. Uh, it's been years, and I've stayed pretty much like this. This has been my room. And, and, but she thrives in a clean environment and in an organized environment. And anybody just so cluttered, but you know, like, where your stuff is in the clutter? Organized chaos. Amen. Shout out. I'm like, hey, where's my left shoe, my left running shoe? Like, well, I don't know. And I was like, it was under that beanbag. My right one was in my, my closet. I have the right one, but I can't find the left one, and you normally clean this area. So where is it? She's like, I don't know. And I'm like, you moved it. I know you did. And I had it exactly where I knew I had left it, and now I can't find it. You're the reason why I can't find things. And, and we have this conversation. And, and, but, but what I learned is her way 
of life is actually so much better. Yeah, come on. I'm, I'm preaching to some people today. This is, it's just so much, I got to be honest. She always knows where everything is. And if she ever needed to go grab something, she can grab it in an instant. There's no running around. She can leave on time to places because she prepped the night before the things she needed. It's mind-blowing to me. And I, because I live like this. And I think, I think what happens is when we live as if a hurricane did come through, we get really torn up when one does. Because it is where I left it, but it's not where it should be. And when a storm comes and rearranges my clutter, when a storm comes and from the outside starts shaping things that are happening on the inside, when I allow outside circumstance to start shaping my inward reality, I start going, I can't figure out where my joy is. What did I do with that? The pandemic came and I can't find, I thought I left my joy here, but I can't find it. Does anybody know where my peace went? Hey, did you move my peace? Because I can't find it. I can't find it anymore. Where's my joy? Where's my rest? Why am I restless in 2020? Why am I, why am I anxious in 2020? I didn't have this before, but when a crisis came, now I can't find the stuff that used to help me during crisis. I don't know where it went. I don't know where it went. And Proverbs is saying, guard your heart. Because the truth is, I found a shirt one time, it wasn't even mine. That happened to anybody? Pick it up, I'm like, ain't no way, this man's a schmedium. Used to be. But them Oreos are good, though. And 30 changes everything, right? Uh, like, those Applebee's wings sit different. And <laughs> it just changes. And I, what this principle is teaching in Proverbs is if you're not careful, people will walk through and drop stuff in your life that's not supposed to be there in the first place. And so he's saying, guard your heart. Because when crisis comes, it'll reclutter your clutter. And when crisis comes, if there's no guard, people will walk through your life and drop something on the inside of it. And you can't find your peace and joy, but you're pulling up things you didn't know were there. And they were there before crisis, and now they're there during crisis. And there's so much of a mess in the soul that I don't know how to figure this out anymore. But there's good news. Because there's... A guard in Proverbs 25, 28 actually writes it this way. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Left without walls. Simon, or Solomon's writing this out and he's saying, guard your heart. And by the way, if, if you lack some self-control, it's pretty much like an open city. Jesus comes in John 10, and he says, the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. How well do you think a city does when the enemy shows up at the gates to find out that the walls are already torn down from the inside? He shows up and goes, hey, this is easy picking, y'all. This is good. The walls are already down. The gates are already open. They got tore up from the inside. And he comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But God wants to be, have us growing in 2020. And the good news of the gospel is the fact that Jesus went to the cross, that he paid for your sin and my sin, and that when he resurrected from that grave, he began to walk into a new life from one glory to the next glory. And then he takes his disciples, and in the book of Acts, he gathers them together, and he says, hey, I have to go, because what I am sending you is so much better than me being here in the flesh. And they're like, what do you mean? 
Well, right now I'm constricted to a physical body. But behold, I'm going to give you a comforter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come as the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit won't just have to reside in one body, but he's going to reside in the body called the church. And the church is going to have the spirit from the inside that's going to well up to everything on the outside. The church is going to start seeing some new things happen. And when you say yes to Jesus, you say yes to his church. And when you say yes to being his church, things change on the inside. They change on the inside. Somebody. 
God can cause to grow. But I can put it in the right soil, in the right environment, with the right light, with the right water, and pray that God would grow that seed. And I think some of us have, 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 have taken our soul, which is the seed, and we've placed it in bad soil and bad lighting and bad water. And we're asking for the blessing of God to grow up from the inside of us. And he's going, you're in the wrong environment. You're in the wrong environment. I want to grow you. I'm ready to grow that thing from the inside out. But you're placing these things in, 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 in habits and in sins and in anxieties. And I want to uproot that environment. Don't even put it in that environment. I want to help you grow. It says that Jesus advanced. He drove forward. He grew in wisdom. Wisdom is insight and skill. He grew grew in wisdom, his insight and his skill. He grew in stature, which is his age. This is a big one. And his maturity. Maturity. Can I tell you that you don't just mature with age? It's not a default of getting older. Sometimes we can be 50 years old but have not matured in the Lord. Paul's writing to a church, and I, I can't remember the exact letter at, at this moment, and he looks at them and he says, I'm still giving you milk. I can't even give you meat because you haven't matured in the Lord yet. How many people know God wants to mature? God wants to grow you from the inside out. God wants to show you things and lead you in things, but it actually takes not only growing in our gift and in our skill, and some of us are really gifted, but also growing in our maturity in the Lord. Do you know how to mature in the Lord? Spend time with the Lord. You want to learn how to get over anxiety in 2020 and how to how to get past all the stuff that's happening. The enemy has walked in and planted seeds and lies and defiance and, 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 and rebellion in your life. And I, I love you as your pastor to come to you and say, if you spend time with the Lord, he would start going, hey, this shirt, that's not even your shirt. Get it out of there. Well, God, what do you want me to do with this? Well, this is a sweet jacket. You have a green one just like it. This is a fruit of the Spirit. You should hang that up. Keep that around. Leave that in the closet. Like, don't throw that on the ground. I don't have a closet, so I'm going to hang you there. And God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And he'll speak to you. He'll speak to you. I, I, I don't have, sometimes we got to get it all together. And Any analytical people, right, you want to kind of put it all together? I, I can't explain to you the formula for God speaking to you because there isn't one. Sometimes it's a knowing. Sometimes it's a person. Sometimes it's community. Sometimes it's a message. Sometimes it's through worship. Sometimes it's when you're in the middle of your day going about your job and you just think a thought that popped into your head that you're like, oh my gosh, I never thought that before. That might be God. All of a sudden I feel loved. All of a sudden I feel peace. All of a sudden I feel grace. God is speaking to you. He grew in maturity. And then it says he grew in favor. And I love this because it, it means gaining grace. Jesus grew in his grace. Anybody need to grow in some grace in 2020? I know when them toilet papers was missing, we needed to grow in some grace, but I love this because it says that Jesus didn't just grow in his grace with God, but in his grace with man. His grace with man. I used to play uh, a game called Zelda. Any Zelda fans in the chat? Holler at me in the chat. Say, I love Zelda. And uh, there's the main character, his name is Link. I used to play him on Nintendo 64. 90s kids, and it was a complex game, but I really liked it because it, it, was, it was these puzzles and these things that you had to do to get to the next level in this land you would travel. It was, it was a lot of fun, but one of the things about Zelda was that you, would, you, you could progress forward without getting everything you needed. So what happened is I'd be in level two of Zelda, so to speak, and um, I, I, I would work the room and 
there, they had these little treasure chests. You would get all the treasure chests. You would collect all the things you needed to do. You'd upgrade your sword, and then and then you'd go into the next level, and I'd be in level three, and then I'd be in level four, and in level four there'd be a door with a key that needed to be unlocked, and I'd be looking for the key, and I could not find the key in level four, and I'd be going to this place, I'd be going to this place, I'd be going to this place. And how many people know when a game gets frustrating, you just stop playing it? for like three years, and then you go back because you're like, why did I stop playing that game? I love that game. And you're like, oh, this is why I hate this game. So I was playing this game, and, and I'm in level four, and I can't find the key to this door, and it was the last thing I needed to, to get to level five, and I was frustrated, and I was confused, and so I had to look it up. What I needed in level four was in level two. What I needed in level four was in level two, and what was great about the game was that if I didn't have what I needed in level four, I could always go back to level two. And when I got to level two, I can search and find and grab this key. And when I take this key, I would bring it over to level four and it would unlock something new so that I can continue to walk into what I was being called to walk in as a little video game character named Link. And I think right now in 2020, there might have been things in 1990 that maybe God is trying to grow and speak and say that we have, may have forgotten and sometimes we need to go back to move forward. Sometimes we need to step back and just look at the situation. Sometimes we need to step back into some old things that we know were good for us in that level, but because we feel like we've upgraded so much in this level that we forgot the simple things in this level. Sometimes we need to go back to just worshiping to some old songs and just saying, God, you're my all in all. Sometimes we need to go back to just worshiping to some old hymns sometimes and saying, God, you're, you're the cornerstone. Sometimes we need to go back to where we used to pray every Friday for an hour. Sometimes we just need to go back to that place and just say, God, I need you to speak to me because you spoke to me here once before and I'm not sure I got everything I needed to keep going where you're calling me to go. And so I'm going to come back to what I know. God, I know that I used to do this Bible study plan, and so I'm going to come back to that place. God, I know I used to be in a life group and in community, and in 2020, I can't find my peace, so I'm going to at least get on a Zoom call and start telling people where I'm at so that I can be in community. God, I remember when I was serving, and it was great, and it was fun, and I had a team, and we were praying, and you were using my life to make a difference, but now that I'm here, I had forgotten, and I need to go back to serving, serving with kids, serving and greeting, serving people, serving coffee at Starbucks. I don't care what it is. But maybe we need to go back to, to some simple worship things. Go back to reading the Gospels. Go back to just praying even though it feels weird. Maybe we need to go back to serving in order to move forward. Can we pray? Jesus, thank you. I want to pray for two groups of people. Those that are saying, I need to go back so that I can move forward. I, I want to grow in 2020. I may have forgotten some of the things in the days of old, but I want to revisit them. Back when it was simpler, back when it was quieter, back when it was a little less disorganized, back when I knew exactly, even in my chaos, where the peace was. And if that's you, just put your hand up, put it right back down. Anybody in this place, you can put it online in the chat. There's a host for you. I see, I see those hands. Yeah, they're all up. I need to go back. I need to go back to the simple things to, keep, to continue growing forward. And then a second group of people are those that are going to make a decision to follow Jesus, maybe for the first time, or maybe it's a, it's a renewed decision today, and it can be in this room or online, but if that's you, I'm going to count to three, just put your hand up, put it right back down, and then I'm going to pray for everybody who put their hands up, but if you want to make a decision to follow Jesus, let me tell you, you cannot change from the inside out without Jesus. All you can do is on your best day try to be your own guard. And you cannot guard it. Solomon wrote it, and we were not able to fulfill it. And Jesus went to the cross and said, I'm going to put my Holy Spirit in them so that all believers, the church of Christ, would have a guard over their soul. 
And so if you've made that decision before, you've got that card. If you want to make that decision today in here or online, you're gaining that card. And on the count of three, just put your hand up, put it right back down, or post something in the chat. One, two, three. Anybody in here? I see that hand. Anybody in the chat? You got a host there with you. You're saying, I'm making a decision to follow Jesus today. God, I pray for all of those that lifted their hand and said that they need to go back to the simple things. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless them. God, that you would anoint them, that you would bring them back to the place. Um, God, maybe where, where uh, uh, David wrote, bring, bring me back to the joy of my salvation. God, bring us back to the simple things so we can continue to grow forward. God, I pray for songs to come welling up on the inside of your church that we used to sing. God, I pray for scriptures and words and even prophetic words and anointings that were prayed over people to come back in the simple times. God, I pray that, that we would continue to grow in crisis because we went back to some of the simple things in community and in serving. God, I pray that we would go back to continue to move forward. God, just reveal to them what they need to do. You know your children. You know each person. So give us a step. Whatever it is, God, and give them the strength to take that step. And if you're making a decision to follow Jesus today, I just want to lead you in a prayer. Because I believe when we say something outwardly of what's happening inwardly, it changes our lives. So right there in your living room or on your iPad or in your car or in this place, can we pray this all out loud together? Just say, Jesus, I say yes to you today. I ask you to be the guard of my life. I believe that your cross... And your death paid for my sin. And so today I lay down my life and I say yes to yours. I believe that your resurrection can give me a new life. And that today I'm no longer who I was. And I'm walking in who you've called me to be. I follow you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. In Jesus' name. Hey, thank you for watching our Grow Life Church YouTube channel. Our hope is always to help you better connect to all that God has for you. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing. Fill out a digital connect card so that we can stay connected with everything that's happening in and through our community. You can also support the mission by giving online as we continue to bring people into a growing relationship with Jesus. Thank you again for watching. We hope to see you soon.